Yep, it's that time of the day. It's time for Talking Pints, my favourite part of the day. No question about that. I'm joined by former boxer Kevin Mitchell. Kevin, welcome to the programme. Cheers. Now, you had what I think you describe yourself as a pretty rough, tough upbringing and teenage years. Yeah, I suppose. Um, being from Dagenham, so I was back then it was quite a big Kansas state, one of the biggest in Europe, so I'm told. Um, it was good, don't get me wrong, growing up in the 90s was great. Not everybody, not, nobody, well, to be fair, back then, nobody had no money. We all played out on the streets, we all played in parks, building tree houses. I didn't think it was that bad, really. People say it was rough, but for me, it was just what I knew, and I enjoyed it. I was lucky, to be fair, to have born in the 80s and grew up in the 90s, I believe, because that generation, well, my generation of kids, I think they were the last ones to have had it good. Yeah, now they sit at home and play. Um, <laughs> well, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing, because like, my kids now, my oldest is 18, and you don't want them out on the streets anymore, because it's too dangerous now. That's the truth, isn't it? So, but that's what I say, but growing up in the night, being not van in the night as a kid, it was, it was great times. I say it was rough and tough. Yeah, you go into your scraps over parks and things, you get clicked by an ear, ear old by, by your old lead, but that, that's just how it was back then. And boxing, why boxing? Well, basically, I played for a football club called Jay's Boys Club, and um, well, my friends grew up and we all played, and I used to fight a lot on the pitch. Probably I was ADHD, probably. But um, it wasn't like that bad. Nobody was diagnosed anything. Yeah, fighting on the pitch, not a good idea. No, no, it wasn't that. I was getting sick <laughs> off, so they put me into a gym and um, I started boxing. It turned out I was very good at it. I was just, yeah, I went from there. I went from, um, I was in Hornchurch in Old Park as, as a 10-year-old kid. Then went to Dagenham Boxing Club. Then went to the West Downs Boy Club. And um, yeah. I just went through, yeah, and I, I won everything. I was lucky, yeah. yeah. And West Ham, not just being where you box, but... Yeah. Being your football team as well? Yeah, being my football team. Obviously, being like from Dagenham area, my dad was a West Ham supporter. All my mates were West Ham. Yeah. He had a couple of Spurs supporters, but <laughs> not many. And what, Kevin, you're an amateur boxer, you're a mm -hmm. good amateur boxer, you're doing well. The decision to go professional, is that a bit, that, that's a big decision, isn't it? Yeah, so I was 18 years of age, and I remember um, been a, my first time in the national press was a Sun paper, and it said um, Kevin Mitchell was too young to be fighting in the senior ABAs. He's the youngest candidate, basically, because I was 18, I was fighting men. And at the time, I was working for Tony Burns, but that he was the, the boss of the Repton Boxing Club. I was with Mickey May, who was the boss of the West Ham, so they were rivalries. I was working for the boss of Repton, but I boxed two Repton boys in one night. I knocked two more boys, they were men. I knocked them both out in the hour. I carried them both, and then a week later, I carried someone else. A week later, I carried another man. I went on like, a knocking spree, so I... I um, I started making a big noise in, in the amateur scene and a lot of the promoters were looking into me because I was a young kid knocking men out. Yeah. And, um, yeah, after I won the senior ABAs at 18, um, I decided then, like, I wanted to be like my idols, which was like Nigel Benn, Frank Bruno, Prince Azim Hammond, people I looked up to, do you know what I mean? So I went in and turned professional and I went from there, yeah. And you started winning fight after fight. Yep. After fight? Yeah, I went on, I think I went on, I had the longest unbeaten record in Great Britain at one point, I think it was about 31, 32. 31, well, yeah, I got 31 yeah, by yeah, now, yeah, say yeah, 31 yeah. unbeaten fights as yeah, a professional, yeah. and you go on and you get the Commonwealth. British Commonwealth, yeah, I won the titles, I got one fight of the year when I was 22, I boxed in O2 Arena, I got my jaw broke in both my hands, I won the British. It's a rough old game, isn't it? It is a brutal old game, but as I say, like, it, it brought a lot of um, good things to me in my, my in my life. I believe, like um, my son's now a boxer. Both my sons have boxed. Um, my brother was a fighter. Got rest his soul. Um, all my family and my two brother-in-laws both boxed. So we all. It was just yeah. We, I think boxing it saved my life in some sort of way. Yeah, it did help me massively. Now, one thing I could never quite understand. You know, you're boxing at super featherweight, and yep. then it's lightweight. Yeah, move up to lightweight. Yeah, and then. One fight you go for, you don't weigh in right, you're over yeah. the number. It's like being a jockey, isn't it, controlling oh, your weight? It's so hard. To the day I retired was a day I found like a new lease of life because all your life is all, your, all, all it's about like my son's now. He fights, he fights Friday, Saturday and Sunday in, in, the, in the national championships up in Birmingham. So right now, as we speak, he's at home, he's, he's done his run and you weigh yourself. Like, every time you eat, you weigh yourself. But your life's all about your weight and that. And, um... Yeah, until the day I retired, I thought, not by myself. And the again. gaps between 
those weights yeah, yeah. are very small, aren't they? And also, if you don't make the weight, literally, you've got no choice, you're out, you're finished. You're out, you're out of the championship, so if, you don't, if it's a pro boxing match and it's a title fight, there's a massive fine that comes in, then you can't fight for the title. So, yeah, you've got to be on point. It's very, um, you've got to be very, very on point. You can't mess about it. It teaches you how to be, like, like regimental and make sure you're, you're on point. Need a fantastic record, 31 wins, a loss. Yep. But it's now Kevin's go, tilt, at going, one, for, yeah. at going for that world at going for that world title. And we've got some shots we're going to show now for the viewers of you at Upton Park and you in the ring and all the rest of it. You came three times you had a go at this, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And at that, that time with Upton Park, you think people were struggling to sell down to arena about boxers back then. And I sold out a football crowd to this arena. So I was a massive ticket seller. I think it was one of the biggest ticket sales in history at that time from a household sales from my mum's house. So I wouldn't, we ain't like how it is this day and age where you sell tickets through com ticket companies. Literally, we sold them tickets through my mum's door. <laughs> so that was years and years and where was your fan base? Was it a London base? Basically, it was that, basically I, was, I think the whole of the country supported me, but I think I was based in the East End of London, but my fan base was East End of London, but I was, I was supported by the whole of England, really, by boxing, really, boxing fans from all over the world. But um, my, my fan base was West Ham, and they, they backed me through thick and thin. And they buy the tickets, and they, they come along. The they come along, I'd throw on big parties after the day, after I put on, I'd lay on like four or five hundred roast dinners for everyone after, in the morning after, so to, to the people, the fans that come and support me every year, every fight, I'd um, lay big dinners on for everyone and things, yeah. It was really, it was a, I was lucky to have lived in that time, because I think it's all changed now, it's all gone like ticket sales now through ticket companies, it's all changed now. And you have these tilts at the world title. On the big stage, yeah. On the big stage, and you get so close. In fact, in one of the fights, Eddie Hearn said, said Kevin was 10 seconds away. Yeah, I was winning. I was, I, well, he was one of the best pan for pan fighters in, in the world, Jorge Linares. He's a WBC Hall of Famer. He's a nice man. I've, um, I've been lucky enough to have a few beers with him as well before, after the fight. Yeah. And, um... I don't know what it was. It was the same in me. I, I matured at a certain age. I think I matured later in my 20s, like mentally and physically. I was a lot more... I knew what I wanted when I was late, in my late 20s. And I thought, I want Jorge Linares. And then yeah, I was like, you sure? He's a good fighter. I said, oh, Ed, just get me in this fight and I can beat him. But it works out, I was winning the fight. And if that had stopped me in the corner on cuts... Instead of stopping me, waving yeah. me off. Well, we got some pictures of that yeah. fight, which we're now going to play. But you and I will go on talking. Yeah. So you got cut. And I, was, I, was, I, went, I battled through it, and I was winning the fight. I was four hands up until they stopped the fight, and I was winning. And that's in, and just the way the job goes. But I believe... How gutted were you to get that close to being I a world champion? I was so gutted, yeah, so gutted. But I believe things happen for a reason. Like I'm now coaching and looking after kids, and I don't believe if I had won that world title, where would I be now? So I think things happen for a reason. I'm now looking after a lot of young fighters, and you'll see a lot of good fighters coming through that I'll be doing the corners for looking after them. So there's reasons. I think things happen for reasons. OK, have you, that's very philosophical. Yeah, I believe in that. I really am a believer yeah. of that. So what have you got? Is it youngsters that you're bringing through or more mature I've fighters? Got, I've got youngsters. I've got young men coming through. I've got, um, I've got a young girl coming through who's a top prospect with um, Eddie Hearn. I've got a young fighting Joel Lillard coming through with um, Eddie Hearn. I've got um, Jimmy Sainz on the GB squad. He's coming through soon. I've got my son, Conor Mitchell, coming through. I've got Freddie Pullen coming through. I've got a load of little fighters coming through that be, yeah, which will yeah, be the way forward. Now, to be a good fighter, to be a top athlete as you were, you've got to be fit. Yep. You've got to train. Dedication. But dedication. Sacrifice. But there were times, Kevin, when you did break the rules a little bit with your, so with your social life. I yeah, mean, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean I, re I read a report that it may not... By the way, we're not glorifying this. No, no, no. But I read a report that you spent 180 grand on booze in nine months. Yeah. It's, it's not possible, is it? No, it was, yeah, it was. It was basically it was just a time when my, my life fell to pieces. And basically back then we all used to go out drinking, every, like me, Ricky Ann, <laughs> Kawasaki. We used to booze heavy. But basically I, I lost the world title fight up to park and that was my dream. That was my, like, my dream that night. I spelt on my family and I just went on a bit of a, bit of a rampage. I lived all over London. I did it my way and woke up bankrupt and, um, and I'll give my last thousand pounds to an homeless person in one for train station. Because <laughs> yeah, it was an army boy, it was an ex-army boy. Yeah, and um, 
And I built myself back up again and got myself back on it again, didn't you? And everything now back on track with life? Yeah, everything's back on track with life. I'm looking at, I've got a good stable of fighters coming through. I've got um, George Lillard out next month up in Liverpool. So, yeah, I've got, I'm really happy with where I'm at the minute. Yeah, I'm doing very well. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.